Today's episode is a kind of familiar. It's called The Survivor, and it's a story written by James Schmierer, and it's his first and only Star Trek script. The Enterprise finds a small damaged vessel with one humanoid on board. They beam him on the ship, and to everybody's surprise, they find out it's Carter Winston. Who's Carter Winston, you might ask? Well, he looks like he just came from an audition to be the new Who singer, and he sounds just like William Shatner, which makes it quite fun to listen to the conversations between him and Captain Kirk. But in universe, uh, he is the famous philanthropist. He several times managed to get insanely rich, but always used his money to help the poor. So why is this weird? Because he has been missing for more than five years now. Well, that also sounds kind of familiar. A famous man missing for five years? Hmm. Then we find out that the crew of the Enterprise includes his fiancée. So, are they intentionally ripping off what our little girls made of, or is it just a huge coincidence which nobody from the writer team noticed? This time the fiancé is not a nurse, but a security officer, Lieutenant Ann Norred. Spock wants to check his identity with his identity tapes, but Mako is pissed that he dares to question his identity. Which is pretty weird, because in the previous scene Mikio himself said that it's impossible and that uh, the man can't be Winston. He is surely dead. But for some reason Mikio is now absolutely sure that the man is Winston. But anyway, he examines Winston and we find out two things. Mikio now officially has a daughter, who actually knew Carter and he finds with his instruments some strange readings but dismisses them as equipment error and says that the instruments need recalibration. It's great that we get a canonical confirmation that Mako's daughter exists, that is, if you consider the animated series canon, of course. I'm pretty sure that it was Dorothy Fontana's idea. She created the character of Joanna McCoy when she was creating the Star Trek Season 2 Bible, she planned to introduce the character in Season 2 of Star Trek. That never happened. Then she wrote her into the script for a Season 3 episode called Joanna, where she was supposed to be a love interest for Kirk. Unfortunately, when the script was rewritten into The Way to Eden, which is considered to be by many fans, including myself, one of the worst episodes of Star Trek ever, Joanna became Irina and the love interest for Chekhov. Then she wrote a script for her for season 4, where she was supposed to be a recurring character and possibly a nurse, but season 4 never happened. But in this episode we get a confirmation she indeed existed, which is pretty cool. But why does McCoy think that his instruments are not working correctly instead of suspecting the patient is not who he claims to be? That's some pretty strange behavior for McCoy. But he's not the only one who's behaving strangely. Everybody except Spock behaves like a member of Carter or Winston's fan club. When checking his credentials, Captain Kirk actually looks like a schoolgirl watching uh, the newest Justin Bieber video. Anyway, Carter and Anne finally meet, so what does he do? Just what every man would do if he would meet his fiancé after five years. He dumps her. But he actually has a good reason for it. As soon as Kirk goes to his quarters, Carter follows him and we find out that he's actually a giant tentacle monster. He touches Kirk, who makes his oh shit I just grabbed my pants face, and falls down. Then we see the tentacle monster putting Kirk to bed while doing something which looks like a hug, but thankfully this show isn't as quote unquote progressive as some of the people as perverted as me would think, so no, he doesn't drape Kirk, instead he turns into him, and uh, goes to the bridge. This fake Kirk goes to the bridge, orders the Enterprise to enter the neutral zone, and leaves the bridge again. 
When later a real Kirk wakes up in his bed, he goes to the bridge and is quite shocked to find out that they're in the neutral zone. When the surprised bridge crew shows him the video of him giving the order, he pretends everything is alright, he orders the Enterprise to leave the Romulan space and goes with Spock to see McCoy. He thinks that he's not quite there and wants to be checked. Meanwhile, Carter Winston vi visits McCoy and takes his place. As McCoy, he then says to Anne that she should indeed try to forget Carter. When speaking to Kirk and McCoy, he admits that he might have done a mistake with Carter's tests and promises to repeat them. Kirk and Spock leave so that he can get back to work, but then Spock realizes that McCoy would never simply acknowledge he might have a mistake, especially not when Spock accused him of it, so they return back, only to find McCoy sleeping on the floor of his lab. Kirk is for a moment confused about what's going on, but when he looks around, he realizes that there's one more bio bed than before. He goes to the extra bed and promises to drop acid on him. Mm, funny, I thought that the term to drop acid means something else. Of course, the bed turns into our tentacle monster, who attacks our heroes and runs away. Hmm, how can he run away on his tentacles? I think that the animators should be more creative about this. It's not like a squid could walk like a man, right? Anyway, Spock says to McCoy and therefore to the audience that the intruder is a Vendorian, who are a race of aliens living in isolation because they can turn into anybody or anything with similar size. The Vendorian is captured by Novred, but he just slaps her on the wrist and she lets him go. I love the fact that they were trying to create many strong female characters for the show, but absolutely every one of them is absolutely incompetent. I'm not sure that feminists would like this type of strong woman. After escaping, he turns into a technician and damages the shield. That's when the action part of the story begins. The Enterprise is surrounded by two Romulan ships. Uh, the Romulan commander wants to confiscate the Enterprise, just like their treaty allows. So Kirk is now in the wrong, because he technically did break the treaty. He is outnumbered and has no defense shields. But James T. Kirk is not the kind of guy who would give up his ship that easily. He asks for them to prepare the crew, but uses it to catch the Vendorian. By the way, this is, uh, I think, the first time we see the new communications officer, Emres. Novred again captures the Vendorian and she lets him go again. Bravo, great strong female character. This time she lets him go because he reminds her on Carter Winston and tells her he loves her or something. Anyway, he escapes and turns into a shield, effectively saving the Enterprise in the battle with the Romulans. That's why Kirk arrests him and lets him go with Anne Norden. I'm sure that will end without any problems. It's not like he escaped her twice already. Anyway, the show ends with a typical funny insult shared between McCoy and Spock. The end. This episode has a couple of problems. It reminds me way too much on what are little girls made of. That script also has the Enterprise finding a famous man who was missing for five years. One of the crew members is the man's old fiance, and there are evil duplicates of our heroes. There are also the typical animation continuity errors. Uh, the most noticeable is the scene with Dr. McCoy, where he alternates between standing and sitting. Also, this episode makes me wonder, how does exactly the form changing work? Okay, I get that the Vendorian can change into anything with similar size. That 
makes kind of sense. But does the Vendorian first need to change into its tentacle monster form? Does he need to touch his victims uh, with his tentacles? Because that's the only reason I can see why he changes his form before each attack. But then we see him attacking Scotty in his human form. So why does he sometimes change before the attack and other times not? Also, does he have some memory erasing powers? Kirk not remembering what happened uh, makes sense because he was attacked from his behind. But why does Scotty not remember what happened? He was attacked from the front. Also, how does the Vendorian know everything his victims know? I assumed uh, he knew everything about Carter Winston because he was his caretaker for the last year of his life, so they apparently did talk together daily. But why does he know everything that Kirk knows? Or McCoy? Does he have some telepathic abilities? He later says that he, the longer he looks like Carter Winston, the more he becomes Carter Winston, but that doesn't make any sense to me. If you dress up like a zombie for Halloween, you don't become a zombie if you don't get undressed for a longer period of time. I don't know, but some aspects of the script feel a bit unfinished. Also, like his change of heart, he sabotages the Enterprise, then talks with Anne and then rescues the Enterprise. It feels a bit rushed. It's again one of the scripts which would work better as a 15 minutes long episode and not 20 minutes long cartoon. Overall, I like this episode, but it could be better. Much better. I think that 7 out of 10 would be a fair rating for this one. But as always, these are just my opinions. Feel free to write down your opinions down in the comment section. If you like this uh, video, hit that like button and feel free to watch any of the previous episodes or any of the different types of videos I'm doing on this channel. Thanks a lot for watching and if you do like these type of videos, come back next week when I'll talk about the next episode called The Infinite Vulcan. Thank you very much. Bye.